let us talk of couple of more important terms in relation to transport of water the first term is osmotic pressure let us first de uh, define it and then we will see the symbols and how it is compared with the other things it is the pressure applied by a solution so whenever we talk of osmotic pressure we are always talking in reference to a solution so it is the pressure applied by the solution or by a solution to prevent the inward movement of solvent or water so when we talk of osmotic pressure we are talking about a pressure which is applied by a solution so that movement of solvent or water can be prevented so this is the definition which we use for osmotic pressure the symbol that we use to represent this is pi now let us talk about another word that is osmotic potential osmotic potential is again we are defining it in reference to a solution so osmotic potential is the potential of water to move from a hypotonic solution to a hypertonic solution to a hypertonic solution so this is the definition and both the words are in reference to a solution in the first case it is the pressure which is applied by the solution to prevent the movement of water and here it is the potential of the water that means the energy with which the water moves from a water molecules move from hypotonic to a hypertonic solution this is with reference to solute potential so here we represent it as ws that is solute potential that means osmotic potential is also referred as solute potential because this is in reference to the tonicity that is concentration less concentration to more concentration that is solution wise now if we have to compare these two things their values are same that means if we have to write it that osmotic pressure and osmotic potential they would come as equal only thing is osmotic pressure is written in positive its unit is always positive or value is always positive whereas osmotic potential is always negative so when we say pi it is equal to the negative solute potential or osmotic potential so this is the comparison that we take and both the terms are in reference to the solution now another important term that we want to discuss is wilting the next term is wilting now when we use the term wilting it is again with reference to water now there are situations when the plant wilts one situation is water availability is less to the plant and evaporation or transpiration is more that can be the situation when the plant shows wilting now when wilting takes place there are three stages of wilting the first is called incipient wilting incipient wilting means there is wilting taking place but it is not visible from outside that means no no visible signs are there let us first understand what exactly would be the signs of wilting and when we say incipient why we are not able to see those signs in the previous videos we talked about 
plasmolysis of cells that means if a plant cell loses water its vacuole will shrink and the cytoplasmic content would come on one side and when all cells get plasmolyzed they start to shrink or they wilt and that is what is we are talking about so when there is more exosmosis more water coming out of the cells then there is wilting now as this water starts to come out initially there is no significant change in the shape of the cell and that is why water is coming out so we are talking of it as wilting but as we do not see any shape change or drooping of leaf we call it incipient it is followed by if the same situation continues it will be followed by temporary wilting here we are going to see the signs or symptoms the symptom is going to be drooping of the leaf normally in a plant when we talk of the leaf remains flat upright and stretched in drooping condition the leaf is going to droop down because of this wilting and as we said it has drooped down it has come down to the lower position we are seeing the signs this is temporary now if at this time water is given to the plant then it regains its turgidity and it will come back to its normal position that means here the plant or the cells retain that property to get deplasmolyzed if the same situation continues that means availability of water is still not there then the plant goes into permanent wilting now permanent wilting is again we would see the drooping of leaves the leaves are going to start drying up and if at this time we provide water then also the plant will not regain its turgidity and will not become normal or deplasmolyzed that means suddenly or in one stage permanent wilting does not take place it is a gradual process first the situation is when water availability is less and evaporation or transpiration which is a continuous process is going on incipient wilting exosmosis has begun it is taking place the plant cells have started to get plasmolyzed but we do not see any sign so there is no sign of wilting after that if it continues there is temporary wilting when we see the sign that means the leaves from normal position they droop down so here the signs are visible and the interesting part is if in the temporary wilting stage water is provided the plants or cells they regain their turgidity and come to their normal condition the third situation is called permanent wilting and in case of permanent wilting even signs are visible e but even if water is provided there is no reversal possible now there is one more term that we have to talk of and it is permanent wilting percentage now this is the amount of water amount or percentage of water in soil where the plant shows or undergoes permanent wilting that amount or percentage of water in soil at which the plant shows permanent wilting the plant wilts permanently so that percentage of water will be called permanent wilting percentage so this is also in reference to transport of water and we use these term whenever the situation is like less water available and more is lost from the plant